It was on rail lines just like these that the Nazis transported millions of people to concentration and extermination camps from all over Eastern and Western Europe. It began in early January 1933 when Adolf Hitler was made Chancellor of Germany and several months later Heinrich Himmler, chief of the SS, was appointed president of the Bavarian police that the first major concentration camp was open in the Munich suburb of Dachau. Arrivals would get their first glimpse of hell passing through Dachau's ominous entrance gate inscribed with the camp's deceptive slogan, Arbeit macht frei, work makes free. Established on the 22nd of March, 1933, on the grounds of an old munitions factory, the camp gradually grew into an extensive complex. During its 12-year history, Dachau would imprison over 200,000 people from all over Europe, including communists, social democrats, unionists, political opponents, and Jews. As an international memorial, Gedenkstätte Dachau is dedicated to the estimated 50,000 souls who lost their lives during the camp's 12-year history. Following the opening of Dachau, a succession of other concentration camps began to spring up throughout Germany including Sachsenhausen, which was located just north of Berlin. Berlin, 1936. While millions throughout Germany enjoyed good times and prosperity, hundreds of other less fortunate people were being held captive in a vast Nazi detention compound 20 miles north of the city. In stark contrast to the hastily built Oranienburg wild camp, once located just a few blocks away, KZ Sachsenhausen represented the prototype of a modern and easily expandable concentration camp. The camp today is a mere shell of the original structure. During its nine-year history, more than 200,000 people were imprisoned here. As with all former Nazi concentration camps scattered throughout Germany, only a few scanty structures and ruins remain today. Located approximately 180 miles southwest of Berlin, Buchenwald, like Dachau and Sachsenhausen, would become one of the most infamous death camps in the history of the Holocaust. During its eight-year existence, more than a quarter million people would be incarcerated here, including hundreds of Allied and Soviet POWs. On the 9th of October, 1950, the Association for Nazi Persecuted Victims decreed that the entire camp, along with all its barracks, be torn down. Today, Gedenkstätte Buchenwald is a national memorial dedicated as a lasting reminder of the injustices committed by the Nazis and to those who suffered and died. More than 21,000 people would be rescued by the U.S. Army which would go on to liberate several other infamous Nazi concentration camps, including KZ Flossenborg. What the GIs found was a disease-ridden camp and 1,500 feeble and emaciated prisoners. The dead numbered into the thousands. Today, the sacred grounds known as the Cemetery of Honor contain more than 5,000 remains, including those who either collapsed from exhaustion or were shot by the SS during the infamous death march to Dachau. The Valley of Death, dedicated in the spring of 1946, is the oldest concentration camp memorial in Bavaria. The final journey video brings the viewer up close and personal in a then and now format to each one of these horrific places for an inside look at how they were operated by the SS, the brutality, the industry that the SS made out of the slave labor, and the terrible stories of all the victims who suffered and died there. Nearly 60 miles north of Berlin are the remnants of a place unlike any other in the Nazi concentration camp system. Frauen Casey Robinsbrook was strictly intended for the incarceration of women and children 
when it opened on the 15th of May, 1939. Newly arrived prisoners, the first 900 of which arrived on the 15th of May, 1939, were issued the standard blue and gray striped uniform with a color-coded badge of shame sewn over the top left pocket. Women with children were confined to a special hut called the Mutter und Kinderberg, where the lack of food and terrible sanitary conditions made life intolerable, leaving only the strongest of the children capable of surviving. But even those would eventually succumb to starvation and disease, with only a very few that would live to see the end of the war. It was in this area where death awaited prisoners in a narrow passageway known as Execution Alley. Although undocumented, reportedly hundreds of women and young girls, most of which were political prisoners, were shot through the neck at point-blank range by the SS. But perhaps nowhere else does the legacy of death permeate more than at the mass burial site known as the Wall of Nations. Anchored by the impressive bronze sculpture called Two Women, the site became the final resting place of hundreds of victims removed from various mass graves scattered throughout the camp and relocated here along the exterior wall of the custody zone. The wall, along with the cemetery, was dedicated on September 12th of 1959 as Gedenkstädter Ravensbruch. Located a few miles east of the free city of Danzig, Stutthof was an insidious place where tens of thousands of men, women, and children would perish as the result of disease, starvation, deplorable living conditions, and executions. The first 150 Poles from Danzig, deemed undesirable, arrived on the 2nd of September, 1939, at what was then a civilian detention camp, operated by the Danzig police. Dominating the front entrance to the camp, the SS Kommandantur was the first glimpse of the hell that new arrivals were about to enter. When the first of 26 mass transports arrived from the Auschwitz-Birkenau death camp and Jewish ghettos in Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia. The steady stream of transports that followed not only increased the number of Jews in the camp from a few hundred to more than 50,000 by late October, but also created deplorable conditions. As with Stutthof, it was in the summer of 1944 that mass transports packed with thousands of Jewish evacuees from Auschwitz and other Nazi death camps were making their way to concentration camps in the West such as Bergen-Belsen. Looking back today, it's hard to believe that a major rail system would have delivered millions of people to their deaths at various concentration and extermination camps, but that's exactly what happened. And without the complicity of the Deutsche Reichsbahn, the Holocaust would have been severely crippled, if not impossible. 